come here today with a fun fall card. So today's fall card is going to be a bit moody. I wanted to do something that was definitely fall. I also have been loving this like kind of blackout technique that's been um wandering through my social media feeds but I wanted to do something a little bit different a little bit a little bit moody a little bit fall uh, so we're going to use um, some different colors and uh, kind of similar you know I got my ideas from the blackout technique but I think that my card turned out I made it my own for sure so I started with this 3D embossing folder. This embossing folder is from Alt New. It is called Flowery Field. And I embossed it. And then now I'm flipping it over and I'm coloring on the inside of the different elements with my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. I'm actually going to do this and show you how to do this two different ways. So this first way is with the, the Zigs and a water brush. And this coloring is fast and messy. So I'm not trying to stay in any kind of lines. I don't care if the ink gets up on the upper portion of my flowers. I just need the flowers to be colored. So fast and messy. Um, I am using uh, the water brush. I'm using my zigs. I'm letting all the colors kind of go together. I wanted something that looked a little bit like a watercolor effect. And I did get that to some degree. Um, I think if I was to try this again, I would use a different kind of paper. I just used a white cardstock for this. And I'm not sure that that was the best choice. I think I would have been better off using some watercolor um, cardstock, but we, this turned out just fine. I love the way the cards turned out. Totally cool. Just, you know, sometimes you do things and you think, mm, I'm going to make this work, but I could have done it better. And that's what this, this was too. So I'm taking colors. I've got some oranges. I've got some, um, pinks, but they're pink on the purple side. So they're kind of giving those like dark moody flower vibes. Once I had this panel covered, I decided that I wanted to kind of re-emboss it because some of the details from the embossing kind of uh, got like a little bit muddy. They're not the embossing lines. The embossed parts aren't as crisp and clean as they were when I started because I used zigs and because I used a water brush and, and worked with the paper a little bit. So I'm going to click my in my colored panel right back into my embossing folder. It kind of just clicks right into place. And then I'm just gonna run it through my die cut machine again to kind of re-emphasize or get those little embossed details back. For my second embossed panel, I'm going to go ahead and do pretty much the same thing. I'm still gonna flip the cardstock over, but I am gonna use a bunch of Distress Oxide inks, again, in those colors, those kind of moody fall colors that I um, am kind of going for. And I'm gonna use some blending brushes. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and messy color inside all of those embossed images. For the greens, I used peeled paint and old paper. For the oranges, I used dried marigold and wild honey. And then for some deeper, darker, moodier colors in some of the flowers, I used crackling campfire and aged mahogany. I used the smallest blending brushes that I have. Uh, I think all the ones I'm using are from Brutus Monroe. And I, um, again, messy, didn't mind so much, just kind of getting the ink into all the cracks and crevices of the embossed areas and not caring too much if, or not caring at all, if I went over onto the solid portion. And here comes the fun part. So for all of the blackout technique that I've seen like online, 
the way I've seen a lot of people do it is to take your ink pad and go direct to paper with black ink. I decided that number one, I wanted to use brown uh, because again, moody fall, that's what I'm going for here. And when I tried to do direct to, direct to paper, I didn't like it at all. I thought it looked um, just, it, it didn't look good. I was not impressed at all. And maybe that was because I used brown ink. I'm not sure. But um, I decided I liked it better to go ahead and come in with my ink blending tool and go over. And I could better control and kind of make sure that uh, the ink kind of stayed where I wanted it to. I felt like when I was doing it direct to paper, it was getting ink into the colored areas I didn't I really want the ink to get into. I love panels turned out. We're not done yet. I love a good splatter and, and details, so we're going to add lots of details to these panels. I am cutting them down, and I'm cutting them down to three and three quarters by five. And then I'm going to be able to put like a little um, uh, pattern paper border around the edge and um, have this be like the focal point. Next, I'm grabbing some pearl shimmer mist from Brutus from Monroe and a fan brush and I am splattering and splattering and splattering. And yes, my son brought me a cup of coffee while I was crafting. Isn't he the sweetest? He is the sweetest. I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to trim it down to three and three quarters by five and then liberally splatter using some of that Brutus Monroe shimmer mist. Now let's talk about details. Okay, for this card, I used a white jelly roll pen in a size 10 and I added highlights to my card. For my second card, which I did on camera, I went with a Prisma colored white colored pencil and I'm just going over all of the little details in the flowers and the leaves. I'm kind of just following the lines as it were and then adding a little bit of highlight across the bottom of each of the flowers and the leaves. And this is going to just add a little bit of interest to these uh, cards. I really like how both of these styles turned out. So you could use whichever one you have in your stash. If you have a jelly roll a size 10 pen, just have a piece of black scrap cardstock beside you so that you can come in and like scribble off on the black cardstock, get the ink running again, then come back to the, the flower. But I did the same thing for both. I just went with the embossed lines that were right there on the card panel, and I used that as my guide as to where the white pencil or the Jelly Roll pen accents would go. To put my cards together, I cut a card panel from that Echo Park Wood Grain Cool paper pad. And I also um, used Emily Moore Designs Card Makers Essential die set so that um, I now have these kind of three layers for my card base. I also um, stamped a sentiment using a stamp set from my stash and then I die cut that sentiment again using Emily Moore Designs card makers essential die and we're going to add those to create these cards so really quick and easy the hardest part of course is those flowers but look how cool this turned out I love it I love this like moody fall this is a little bit darker than cards I usually make I usually go more for light and bright but I really wanted to play with this technique and I really wanted to give it that like fall into winter kind of cozy vibe to it and I think I reached my goal perfectly. So I'm just going to put these cards all together. Um, these are A2 card bases and then I have I chose a wood grain for each of the cards. So it's the wood grain and then the panel and then the sentiment. 
Lastly, I'm gonna add a little scattering of sequins. These are light white bright sequins. I'm just going to add this scattering of them for an accent on each of the cards. I'm just, I think I added five to each and this just adds a little something extra. I always like a little bling, a little sparkle to my projects. Those last little details are always my favorites. Here are all of the close-ups. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week and I will see you again very soon. Bye!